So good morning, everyone. I want to give you a warmest welcome. Thank you so much for coming to the Horseman School for the Deaf and Hard of Hearing. I am the proud principal of an American Sign Language English Dual Language School, which serves uh, regionally. We're a regional source for deaf and hard of hearing students, not just in Boston, but surrounding districts as well. So a quick recognition to our student body government officers who are present with us today. And our, let you all know our community is so excited about the Green New Deal. It's very, very exciting. I also want to acknowledge my uh, much respected colleague, Principal Enriquez from the Jackson Mann School and his community. We've shared this space for decades. And it's it been an honor to work with them. <laughs> Yeah, we've shared many, many experiences and many years with the Jackson Mann community. It's my privilege and honor to introduce our superintendent, Dr. Caselius, who will speak next. Thank you, Principal Eisen-Smith. And um, thank you all for being here with us today. And thank you, Mayor, for your leadership on the Green New Deal. We can't be more excited about it. We announced this last week, um, and we are just incredibly hopeful for the buildings that our children are finally going to get that they deserve. I want to thank our guest, President uh, Weingarten, for being here today. Um, she's over on this side. Um, just AFT National, because I hope that this is going to be a model for the nation. Our school buildings across the nation are in terrible um, disrepair and need this kind of attention that Mayor Wu and her entire cabinet, Dion Irish, who's over PFD, is doing to support our Boston Public School students and their families. I want to give a special shout out to Charlie Kim, who is the president um, of one of the uh, parent groups here at Horseman School. He has been a champion uh, for a new building for many, many years. And uh, without his support and the support of all of our parents and our students really um, helping us to move forward our agenda, we couldn't do it without them. It's going to be an all hands on deck approach here in Boston Public Schools. We have 121 schools that need a lot of support and help. And with this investment, we are going to be able to not only give the schools the, the learning environments that they need, the amenities that they need, like libraries, gymnasiums, um, working bathrooms and sinks, all of the things that children should have. Um, we are also going to be able to give them um, greener schools for our environment. So it is a twofer. And so I want to thank everyone here uh, for their incredible uh, work doing this. I want to introduce um, Chair Robinson, who has uh, been an incredible champion for our Boston Public Schools for many, many years, and uh, she's going to be carrying on this legacy and bringing all of these proposals forward. So, Chair Robinson. Thank you, Dr. Caselius. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you all for being here this morning. Um, when we used to say, if you've seen one Boston Public School, that's all you've seen. We have 121 wonderful communities. And coming here this morning and seeing again the incredible work that goes on in the Horace Mann School that has gone on forever here. We were the first school for deaf and hard of hearing in the nation. But for so long, it, that work has gone on here in a building that does not support their vision or the program. We have babies inside, parents and infants who are learning to be bilingual, dual language from the day of birth. Because this school is about giving kids an opportunity to be heard, to be a contributor. And they need an environment that does that. Make do, makeshift won't do for our kids, for any of our children. We have 120 plus amazing communities, many working in buildings forever that have not supported their needs. This Green New Deal is a game changer, a long time game changer. And again, this amazing city of Boston that when you go to the seaport, you see a city bursting with new buildings. And now hopefully we will see bursting with new buildings our neighborhoods. For whom? For our kids, for our re residents, for Boston's future. 
the future that Boston is growing here, not importing that comes from around the world to take on our treasures, but we are going to support from the ground up our kids and our families. So thank you again, Mayor, and I want to turn it over to you. Good morning. Thank you so much. I am thrilled today to be here with leaders locally, nationally, who are here to celebrate the learning that is happening in Boston Public Schools and our commitments to boosting and nurturing that learning in every way possible. I am proud to be a Boston Public Schools mom. And every day when my two boys get ready for school, I think about all the ways in which the work that we're doing is affecting not only the day, the next eight hours of their lives, but the next decades of their lives after that. Our schools are the foundation that is preparing our young people for their fullest selves to step into the opportunities that we are creating in the city, to take leadership on the issues that we are facing right now. And I'm so grateful to stand with this group of leaders, our superintendent, our uh, school committee chair. We also have school committee member, Dr. Alkins, here with us. Thank you for, for your service and your leadership. We're here with our commissioner for the Commission for Persons with Disabilities, Commissioner Kristen McCosh, who I've been at many events recently with all across the city. Thank you for all that you do to ensure that all means all. Uh, I am here with Jessica Tang, president of the Boston Teachers Union, and our leaders from her team, of course, with Randy Weingarten representing teachers nationally, uh, and also someone who is a hero and mentor of mine in the education space, Paul Revel, who has led and served this Commonwealth in a way that has set a standard for the rest of the nation and continues to ensure that Boston and Massachusetts will be leading the way. Okay, did I miss anyone? And I'm not, I'm purposely not recognizing Councilor Braden because I'm handing it over to her next. Um, thank you, Charlie. Thank you to the school committee community. And thank you to our uh, incredible school leader, Michelle, our first deaf school leader in the district who brings her whole heart, who brings her full passion to every conversation that we have had about the needs of our students here in this community and across the entire city. I'm here to emphasize that the Green New Deal for Boston Public Schools is the pathway to the most rigorous academics, the most nurturing learning environment for our kids. Of course, the climate challenges we face are urgent. Of course, we stand in a moment where public health has been elevated in a way that we will never turn away from the impacts. But most of all, I know in sending my kids to school every day that what affects their learning and their ability to fully engage is our ability to provide a space, an environment that really recognizes their whole selves. Our children deserve state-of-the-art science labs, acoustically designed performing arts spaces, play areas that allow them to let loose for a few minutes during recess, school lunches that are healthy, nutritious, locally produced, and by the way, our new vendor putting that funds, putting that, that, uh, those taxpayer dollars right back into a local Roxbury-based business. <laughs> what happens in our classrooms is directly connected to what happens at home and in the community. And we want every one of our young people to know that when they walk into these spaces here, they're walking into a home that is just as comfortable just as loving, just as inspiring as any space where they feel lifted up in the city, including their own homes. We got to spend some time with the young people and the incredible teachers here. Um, Randy and I got to crouch down and play with a little girl who was playing in a, a large, um, there was a, a sort of bin of soil 
and she was all ready. She refused the, the gardening gloves. She said she was just going to get right into it with her bare hands and had a little watering can and um, we were planting carrots and I think you had green beans <laughs> and I had tomatoes. And I think that's what all this is at the end of the day. Our little ones are going to sprout up. They are going to grow and blossom and it is on each and every one of us to make sure that we provide the healthiest, richest soil for them to put down roots. The water that we can sprinkle on them with activities and sports and arts. The nourishment that they will get here truly will allow them to take root and then blossom for the rest of their lives. And so I'm excited for this Boston Green New Deal, for, for a Green New Deal for Boston Public Schools because this is how we connect our students to the opportunities in the city. This is how Boston continues to lead once again as the birthplace of public education and the place where we can show everyone across the country how we support the whole child and in doing so support our whole communities. So I'm very grateful to everyone here and very honored to pass it on to my colleague and sister in service, someone who is fighting for this community every day, uh, your district city councilor, Liz Braden. Hey, Liz. Good morning, everyone. Uh, I'm so delighted to see you all here this morning. I'm pr very, very grateful to Mayor Wu and um, Pr Superintendent Casilius and uh, Jessica Tang from BTU all here this morning to um, take a little time just to focus on the great work that we do, um, our, the Jackson Mann community. The, ja the Horace Mann School for the Deaf and Hard of Hearing does here every day. They have a storied history. This, this school was established in 150 years ago. And uh, I'm really, really excited to hear that uh, the city of Boston is making a commitment in the Green New Deal, deal for Boston Public Schools to rebuild a state-of-the-art uh, school to, uh, for the deaf and hard of hearing. And this is incredibly exciting, and uh, it is a new chapter in the, in the storied history of deaf education in the city and for the region. It's very, very important. So thank you all for being here. Um, I, I will continue to advocate strongly for the Jackson Man and the Horace Man community here and the, the broader um, community of um, students with special, special needs who need all the support that we can give them to succeed and develop their full potential. So thank you very much. I'd like to hand it on to Jessica Tang. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. So before I became president of the Boston Teachers Union, I was a middle school social studies teacher. And I witnessed firsthand the importance of facilities and its impact on academic achievement. Imagine trying to read in a 90 degree classroom or trying to learn algebra while worrying about parts of the ceiling falling down in a room where also the clocks never tell the right time. These experiences are all too common for students and educators all across the district. And this is why we are so excited to be partnering with the city and the district on these much needed upgrades to school facilities through a Green New Deal for Boston Public Schools. This initiative will jumpstart construction on the most new school buildings in a single undertaking in decades. And an investment of that magnitude is long overdue. It also addresses much needed investments, including AC, green spaces, and facilities upgrades that impact to both air quality and climate change. And over the last year, we've been negotiating our updated union contract with the district, and one of our main priorities, priorities is modernizing our school buildings. And our community deserves a clean, green, safe, and welcoming school buildings for our students to learn in and our educators to work in. And this administration is taking huge steps to make that happen and make it a reality. So all of us are here today because we are confident in the plans this administration has to revitalize our school district, both inside and out. No one knows Boston schools and what our students need, as well as the educators, families, and students who make up our school communities. And our mayor is a part of that community as a parent with children in Boston Public Schools, too. 
And being at the Horace Mann this morning especially highlights the need for high quality spaces that accommodate all students with all abilities. For students who are deaf, we need to make sure that there is a visual PA system, visual fire alarms, and room setups that facilitate visual learning. The same is true for our students with special needs across the city whose facilities may not match their needs and services, whether it be for physical therapy or therapeutic settings. We also know that students are more likely to feel respected and cared for when their school buildings and classrooms are up to date, welcoming, and facilitate their learning. We have the opportunity now to inspire and energize students with facilities they are proud of and excited to walk into each day. So our members are so grateful to the Mayor Wu and the school department for this crucial step toward progress within BPS to create the schools our students deserve. It is a major step in ensuring all of our Boston's public school students have facilities that meet their needs to learn and grow, while also addressing much needed climate change updates, not just for our students, but for all of our communities. So thank you all so much. Again, we're just so excited to be here, and this is the, the work of the future. And at this point, uh, I also wanted to thank uh, President Weingarten from our international local for traveling here to Boston to celebrate this historic investment. And I'd now like to pass it over to Paul Revel. Thank you very much, Jessica. Uh, it's a great privilege for me to be here. It's been a long time since I've had the opportunity to tour schools and see teachers and students at work and the, the good work of education going forward. I, um, I have an adult child with special needs who uh, lives in this neighborhood, actually, and I've been on the journey that parents and children who are in this school have been on as a parent myself. Uh, and Today, when we come together to talk about buildings, it seems to me to be a matter of common sense. It seems to be to, uh, to be a matter of decency and above all, a matter of equity in terms of what we're doing in the school system. Uh, our students need buildings that support them. Everybody else has said that in a long line of speakers today, but I just want to underline the message that we send in the buildings that we provide for our teachers and students to do the business of education. Are they places that are welcoming, safe, healthy, supportive, inspiring to come to? And I think the answer has to be no. Here we are in the city on a hill with evidence of great wealth and prosperity all over the city, and you look at our school buildings, and they're kind of shocking in some regards. I remember when Superintendent Caselius first came to town, and I won't quote her, but I remember here's a national senior ed educator um, touring the city and having a look at our buildings and uh, really amazed, shocked, disappointed at some of the kinds of things that we see by comparison with other cities who aren't as privileged as we are in terms of wealth and opportunity. So I think this is a huge step forward. We're very fortunate to have a mayor who's made this a priority, who's made this commitment to uh, providing the kinds of spaces that will be uh, welcoming and supportive and healthy uh, for our communities and for our students, places where they want to come and they want to learn. And I would challenge uh, all of our local officials at the local, uh, all of our public officials at the local, state, and federal level to provide the necessary support to meet this commitment, and not only meet the commitment, but to extend it beyond what's already been promised, because we've got a long way to go in this city, uh, and there's a lot of hard work to do. Last thing I'll mention is just sort of a practical point. You know, Boston, like a lot of uh, uh, metropolitan school areas, like a lot of districts generally, um, is, is challenged in inspiring the confidence of the public, in attracting top-level educators and staff to the work, in encouraging families to send their children here. And so we're in a kind of competition. And if you take a look at the buildings around that other schools or school systems have, uh, we're not in a good position to be competitive unless we do the kind of work that we're here today to celebrate. Uh, so I would urge us all to get four square behind this and do our utmost to support Mayor Wu and what she's pledged to do, uh, because it's a vitally important part of providing an equitable, excellent education for each and every child in the Boston Public Schools. So thank you for that. We are privileged today to have with us one of the most influential leaders in the nation in public education, uh, President Randy Weingarten of the American Federation of Teachers. Randy, thank you for joining us. So I'm honored to be here. 
for many different reasons. Number one, I am a teacher of social studies who's still on leave from my teaching position at Clara Barton High School in Brooklyn, New York. And one of the first things I did at Clara Barton High School many, many, many decades ago was we had an asbestos crisis that was really a modernization crisis. And this is a school that graduates kids who won in competitions on the Bill of Rights and the Constitution and had asbestos raining down on them. And we fought to have that modernization. In fact, I sued then Mayor Rudy Giuliani, Mayor Wu, to get the kind of resources we needed in New York City. We still had coal burning heating systems. And as Mayor Wu said, and as Jessica said, and as others said, what signal does this send to kids when they walk into a school that is dilapidated? What signal does it send when they don't have science labs, when they don't have places to play, when you're at this amazing school for the deaf and you don't have the visual work that Jessica just talked about? What signal? And you have a mayor in this city, and cities are where it's at right now. You have a mayor in this city who has worked together with the officials in this city, with the community in this city, and put together a $2 billion plan to modernize schools, to give Horace Mann the, the environment that, that our kids need. To, 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 do the, to send a message to kids that we're going to have electrified buses and reduce the fossil fuel output that we're going to have HVAC systems in schools that work so people like me who are asthmatic can breathe in a school, not just because of COVID, but because of everyday life. That kind of initiative that all of these folks who are here are supporting, that is the Boston of today and tomorrow. There's no quick fix for what just happened in COVID for what happens with social media and conspiracy theories and the distrust that's all around the nation. But one of the ways we change things, one of the ways we move together, one of the ways we make every public school a place that parents want to send their kids, that educators want to work, and kids thrive, places that are safe and healthy and welcoming, is that we create trust. And that is what the mayor is doing, the new mayor is doing in Boston, with the help and support of the Boston Teachers Union and the Boston and all the people you see back here. I know it's Boston. If I forget to say somebody, I'm going to be <laughs> So all the people you see back here behind me, we need to let the mayor do this work in a way that Boston thrives on a local level, not on a state level, but on a local level. So I am here today to give the AFT's support, full support, not only for the Green New Deal, but to let Boston be Boston and make sure that there's local control of this school system so that these actors can help give kids a chance to dream their dreams and achieve them. Thank you. No questions, right? <laughs> Let's do on-topic questions, and if there are anything unrelated to our uh, Green New Deal for Boston schools, then we can take it off to the side in a separate scrum. Mayor, we heard from Jessica Tang a moment ago, but I'd like to hear from you, perhaps from Dr. Facilities as well. As you toured the school, what are some of the things that stood out to you that you think need to be included that would improve the education of school? I try to spend time in at least one school a week, often multiple, um, as, as part of my regular schedule. And unfortunately, some of the, you know, there's some commonalities across basically every school visit that I get the chance to do. One is how amazing our young people are. And I love 
looking up and seeing the adults' eyes light up when we're in a classroom because there's so much joy from our young people. They're ready to learn. They are eager. They are so smart, so talented. There's so much happening with our educators who are holding up the world. We saw incredible examples of the world-class education that is happening here that our teachers and educators are putting their whole selves into every day. But when you walk through the hallways, it just feels dated. And as, as you had heard, um, in this space in particular, this school, the needs that our deaf children have to really have a full visual experience for every aspect of learning, whether it is open layouts for classrooms, it doesn't fit when the classrooms are quite tiny and you need that full space for everyone to be able to be in one conversations and to look across the room and see conversations that are happening in, in all corners of the room. Even something as small, Michelle pointed out, the um, fire alarm system is not designed for a school for deaf students here in terms of the visual signal that is needed and, and uh, would be required in a, you know, God forbid, a, some sort of emergency. And so for this school, uh, the horse man and the Jackson man are part of the first phase. I want to emphasize that $2 billion is a big number. We are proud that this is the first uh, set of schools we are putting into the pipeline. The process is a multi-year process where there's a needs assessment done with community process to fully inform the design of the building and then the cost of design is funded and then the cost of construction is funded according to the designs that are set and created. And so the $2 billion right now represents the schools that are in the uh, final stages of that schools that are about to be fully renovated, schools that are in the study phase, and then schools that are in the needs assessment phase. But that $2 billion certainly will grow as more schools move from needs assessment into design, into construction as well. So for once in Boston, we're not starting with a deficit-based view. We're not starting with, this is all we can scrap together, let's try to make it stretch. We are going to deliver to our students, our school communities, our educators, and the entire city, the schools and learning environments that our young people deserve. Uh, Mayor Wu, um, do you have concerns about the safety issues that have been in schools lately? And if so, uh, what is that to do about it? I mean, I send my four-year-old and seven-year-old to Boston Public Schools every day, so I know what it takes to release your child into a different environment that's not your home and how, you know, I, my kids were at City Hall daycare when they were younger. I cried just going downstairs two floors to drop them off that first day, so I, that is what I think about when I wake up, when I, when I go to bed at night. Um, our schools are incredible learning environments. We need to do better by all of our school communities. In, in the incidents that have been highlighted recently, uh, there have been clear protocols that, that I have reviewed. I have seen the, the procedures that have been followed, and we are in touch with each of the families. No child, no educator should ever face any, anything but a healthy, inspiring, nurturing environment throughout the day. And so uh, we are working towards making sure that that is true in every single instance in a very large school district with 50,000 students and 120 plus schools. Um, we take each incident very, very seriously. But I do want to just dispel, you know, there's been some, um, I think, suggestion of whether BPS is not cooperating or working with law enforcement, that is absolutely false. Um, there are clear protocols set out and we have coordination between our Boston Public Schools leaders, our law enforcement, public health, uh, the, all of the relevant agencies involved in the city, in, across our city departments on a regular basis and we, we work with them very closely on each incident. Last question, staying on schools, Mayor, how do you see the prospect of receivership playing into the community? I'm about six months in now, and every single day of those six months, we have been able to accomplish something 
that shows even more is possible and things don't have to be done the way they have been done. Uh, sometimes it's a really small thing and sometimes it's a bigger thing. We work on that every single day. This is a moment of great challenge for our city and, and for our country and as President Weingarten mentioned, the breakdown of trust nationally does spill over into local policy making and local politics as well. But I have never felt more hope about the direction for this city based on the energy that I receive across every neighborhood, every meeting that I'm in, whether it's at a neighborhood association, in a boardroom of a large company, at a, a, a small restaurant, people are always asking me, how can I help Boston Public Schools? How do I get involved? How do I contribute to the momentum that we are building? And so we are ready and moving forward to, to deliver on all of the issues that we just discussed as a city over the last mayoral election. Our new administration is running on full cylinders. We are partnering with our community members, with, of course, school communities, but also with our partners in business, in philanthropy, in nonprofit, getting everyone on the same page. Over the last week, in addition to the Green New Deal for Boston Public Schools, we've announced major partnerships around early college and innovation pathways that directly allow for our students and empower them to accumulate college credits and get on a vocational track while still in Boston Public Schools. So I'm really excited about where we're headed, and uh, we expect and demand partnership from the state on that. We need resources and investment and partnership from every single sector, city, state, federal government, all sectors of our community here. Uh, we will continue pushing for that. Receivership does not move us in that direction. You're committed to spending this money on this investment, whether Boston goes under receivership or not. I mean, in a, I, th I think that's an impossible question to answer because in, in the case of receivership, that wouldn't be our decision to make, potentially. Thank Anyone else want to offer that? Okay, thank, thank you, everyone. Dr. Casillas, could you ask me about the school safety piece as well? There is a, we, can, we can do a little scrub to the side. Can we do a little scrub? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, 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 yeah.